Hello, you probably have more USB power adapters and regular wall adapters in your home than you realize. They power everything from your internet router, your security cameras, Roku, and smart cat feeder, just to name a few. If you look around your house, you'll probably see them everywhere. They're innocuous and you probably don't think about them twice, but why should you if they're doing their job? Well, as viewers of my channels know, I have reviewed my fair share of these devices, as we have seen, and they're not all created equal. In fact, looking around my house, I find no less than 20 adapters. So I got to thinking, would it be more efficient to swap out many of these smaller USB chargers with a few larger, more efficient adapters, and even more modern adapters? I decided to start with the lights that I use while making these videos. On this channel, I review quite a few power adapters. Today I wanted to do something a little different and see how these power adapters perform when they aren't charging a phone or laptop, but directly powering devices instead. I'm not doing a review here, but really just an example of how this all works. In the video, I'm going to walk through why you might want to do this, how it benefits you, and what are some of the options available on the market to make this work. I'm going with a totally plug and play option today, so no soldering to keep things easy. Anyone can do this. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or down in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and anyone who supports the channel. Some of these power adapters are getting larger and have more ports and more watts. Not only can these charge a phone or a laptop, but these can also be used to power numerous devices like routers, modems, network equipment, PoE equipment, and other USB devices like cameras or accessories or even inkjet printers. Some of these ideas require more work than others and certainly varying levels of DIY. Here is an example of how a USB power brick can be used with a little module to make an adjustable output voltage power supply. This is useful for DIY projects and things like that. Today I'm going to be replacing a bunch of wall warp bricks that use three power sockets and aren't the most efficient offering on the market. With one 200 watt USB power brick that can power all of my studio lighting for making these very YouTube videos and improve my efficiency, power factor, and AC current distortion with one simple swap. The first thing to look at is this old power brick. The PQS on this thing is pretty typical for a wall warrant style switching power adapter. It isn't bad in context, but it is awful when you start stacking these up. Six amps peak for three of them. This creates noticeable and measurable voltage noise changes on other power sockets, which I was starting to measure. The stats are a little better than the small USB power supply available today though, so I swapped this for a small USB power adapter, the new Anker 511 30W adapter. I thought I'd be making no gains, but it turns out this is actually quite a bit lower power usage wise. More on this in a bit. This doesn't solve the problem of taking the adapter noise away though. If it is size you are after, then there's no real comparison here. The tiny USB adapter and cable are much smaller than the wall warrant style adapter and at similar power levels. Even the 200 watt combo is much larger. This is not bad if you consider it's actually more efficient too. There is another requirement here. I need the USB power adapter to be able to handle the power requirements. The total is fairly easy to handle, but the issue comes down to USB power delivery and power negotiation. Many power adapters with lots of cables plugged in drop the power delivery voltages too low, so can't, in this case, power all my lights, even if the watts are available. These 200 watt power bricks, though, have plenty of juice and plenty of ports. Since I will be operating them well under their rated power, they should have a decently long life and stay stable, cool operation. The Watovius 200 watt adapter is what I ended up using in this case, just for the ease of mounting. Although, the Ugreen is more efficient, so maybe I'll swap over to that. It has to have at least three USB-C ports with PD on all of them at once. Okay, so how do we make this all happen? Time to do some work. The USB-C port can output various voltages per the PD 3.0 specification. Yes, there's a 3.1, but this adapter is really 3.0 compatible. These voltages are 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltages in this case. The next thing we need to check is that the current capability is meeting the requirements. It looks like this power adapter can deliver 3 amps in the 15 volt mode, so 45 watts total on each port. Great, this also meets my requirements. Things are looking really good so far. The next part of this process, now that we know the power adapter can provide the power needed, is to select some adapters. The lights use a standard 5.5 to 2.1 millimeter barrel plug power connector. So the goal is to get from USB-C port to the 5.5 millimeter barrel plug. I searched on Amazon, you can do this on your preferred site, eBay or AliExpress, and for the most part, you will need to do some testing to make sure the wiring is correct. I honestly didn't do any, I just shoved the wires together and hoped for the best. This delivered the 15 volts needed for my lights. How did I get to 15 volts? 
The cable has a chip in it. The cable negotiates for one of the available voltages and sends it to the light to power the LEDs. This adapter requests the 15 volts specifically from the USB-C port and provides an output in the form of a barrel plug. I also picked up a few 5.5 millimeter extension cables since I needed a couple more feet to get to my lights. Once all the parts arrived, I was able to go ahead and plug all the bits in and do some testing. I really should have checked voltages and polarities, but I assume things got assembled correctly and I won the lottery since everything I plugged in and powered up worked on the first try. I then added another light. We know from the 200 watt review that this adapter doesn't negotiate with two lights plugged in, but if you add a third device and then the second and third port go on a little dance to figure out where to send the power. Now, every time I turn on the lights, I get this. That is all good though. It is a great example of how the power is delivered from multi-port USB-C power bricks and how they have to figure out where to send the power. When I try this with smaller wattage bricks, the three USB-C ports, I end up with one light off all the time. This was too easy. I literally got these cables, plugged everything in, and it worked. I'm going to do the same upgrade with my router and other devices to save a little more and further improve the power factor on that system. I said it was going to be easy. Everything was plug and play and worked out of the box. Odd voltages or current requirements and polarities make things more complicated though. That's where that little DIY solution comes in. Here we can see the U-Green adapter's performance when fully loaded. The Watobius adapter did have a major problem that it gets way too hot under full load, so I don't recommend high wattage with that one, but at 55 watts, this will not get too hot. Okay, getting distracted. So why should I do this? Saving power outlets, cleaning up the AC power usage, and saving money. The lights are now power factor corrected by switching to this adapter. The power usage looks like this. Much better than the previous performance metrics. Less current by a lot, which means all the other components in the system waste less heat. My analyzer doesn't show all the waste in the components before the analyzer, but these are measurable. Not huge amounts of power, but still wasted power. There is a reason why a lot of LED light bulbs, at 5 to 10 watts each, have power factor correction built in. Every little bit does matter when you scale it up to entire populations. In my tiny use case here, not much dollars wise, cents really, but it does check a few boxes using the combo adapter. I could swap it for a more efficient USB-C port laden adapter, but not today. So these small power bricks are fine, but when you have five of them doing the job of that one power factor corrected adapter can do easily, it's time to upgrade and update and save a few dollars. Let's talk about the savings a little. The power factor being corrected now means that the real power cost changes. The cost of running this whole system is still pretty low, but it gets a little bit lower on this new setup. The original power usage in terms of real power is almost identical, but the power factor was about 0.5 with high harmonics. This means that the peak current flow is about 6 amps. This compared with the peak current from the power factor corrected rig, only 0.6 amps, means that the extra real power loss dissipated in the rest of the system is about 5% of energy savings. It doesn't sound like much, especially since electricity is cheap, but everyone using the less efficient method times the many electronic devices we use these days means there's a lot of noisy and wasted energy required to do no useful work except produce heat. So in this case, I'm only saving about $1 a year in electricity, but this is for the one thing in one place. If everyone did this for all the things in all the places, then we'd have savings that would be very non-trivial. One adapter is a tiny piece of the pie. So the basic idea here is that it's very easy to take advantage of USB power delivery and get a USB to barrel jack power cord for many different devices that were never intended to be USB powered. They can be different voltages or even odd voltages with an extra converter or use a PPS mode, or you can even mix and match to meet various demands for your devices. When you do this while also using a power factor corrected power adapter, you can take advantage of cleaner AC power, which also means more efficient adapters to save money and minimize electricity use. Sounds like a win-win to me. Let me know if you want to do more content using power adapters for non-standard cases. Thanks for watching. Check out the series on power adapters if you want to see more. I will have some affiliate links down in the description if you want to help out the channel. Hopefully I'll make more videos on actually being able to use these power adapters as opposed to just reviewing the adapters in the future. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks again and bye.